In this section, line of best fit, our objective is to be able to determine the equation of the line of best fit in order to make predictions and solve real world problems using mathematical models. Let's take a look at this situation. Mrs. Marsh took data from her classes and found that for students who studied more, their test scores were higher. The following is a graph of the data. If this trend were to continue, what would a test score be for a student who studied 10 hours? So take a look at this data. We see that on the x-axis we have the hours of studying. So on the end on the y-axis we have the students test scores. So for example, a student who studied two hours got approximately a 60 on their test. So notice on the y-axis it goes 50, the next line there's nothing, and then 70, the next line there's nothing, and then 90. So we assume that's 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Now notice the zeros down here, and there's this little zigzag lightning bolt. This is telling us that there's a bunch of the y-axis that we've cut out. We've shrunk that part of the y-axis so that we can fit this picture without having to show all of the other values between 0 and 50 because we didn't have any test scores between 0 and 50. So noticing how when the hours of studying increases, the test scores increase. We can make a prediction about a student who studies for 10 hours. If we're going to 4, 6, 8, the 10 would be approximately right here. This would be where 10 hours of studying would be. And if we follow this trend, now I notice that the data looks like it's going up and up and up. So if I follow what the trend is doing, then I see that at 10 hours, the test score is going to be around here. So if this is 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, this would be 100. This looks like it's slightly under 100. Maybe that's about 99. Maybe it's 100 when it gets up there. So what would a test score be for a student who studied 10 hours? Following the way the data is trending, it looks like the test score would be maybe 100. Just following the pattern of the data, the test score might be 100. This is called a scatter plot. It's a scatter of data in a graph. And when we draw a line that looks like it's showing where the data is going, that's called a best fit line. A scatter plot is a graph used to determine whether there is a relationship between paired data, like x and y. Scatter plots can show trends in the data. A trend is like a tendency. There are different ways to show correlation or a relationship. Correlation is like saying relationship between the data. We can have the data look like a positive, making a positive correlation, where if I drew a line that went through the data, a best fit line, the line would be increasing. It would have a positive slope. If I drew a line through the data and it were decreasing, that would be a negative correlation or a negative relationship between the data. When the data is just kind of clumped together or kind of spread out such that I can't draw a line that looks like it's increasing or decreasing, that would mean that there's no correlation. The lines that I drew through the data of the positive correlation and the negative correlation are called a line of best fit. This is a line that's used to model the trend in the data having a positive or negative correlation. Today we're going to write the equation for the line of best fit. Today we're going to use slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b 
to show our line of best fit. Let's look at some examples. Number one, what is the most, what is most likely the equation of the line of best fit for the set of data points? So we see this scatter plot has a positive correlation. This is the one that I showed you in the beginning. When we draw a line of best fit, we want to make sure that we're drawing it such that the data points are equally spread above and below the line. So drawing something up here would not be good because all the data would be below. We want to draw something that is going approximately through the data. Now it's kind of tough to just draw it, so I'm going to pull out my ruler so that before we draw the line, we can see that when we line up with the ruler, we're going to have some points that are above the line and some points that are below the line. So we line up our ruler and then we do our best estimate of where we think the line would go. So here I have a line of best fit. I see some points above my line and some points below my line. If I'm going to write the equation of the line, I would prefer to use y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. That means I need a y intercept. Let's look on the y axis and I see it's crossing at approximately 50. So I would say the y intercept is 50. I also need m, the slope. So for the slope, I want to look at two points that are on this line, not two random points that are above or below, but points that are on this line. So approximately where it looks like it's crossing through, I might see right here and right here. So these are two points that are on my line, not points that are from the data. And I notice from these two points that the slope looks like 1 over 2. So my slope is approximately 1 half. Now I can take my b and m and put it into y equals mx plus b. y equals 1 half x plus 50. And there's an equation of my line of best fit for this set of data points. Number two, the table shows students' test scores and how many hours per day they spend on their phone doing activities that are non-school related. Number of hours per day on the phone, which we're calling H, and their test scores that we're calling capital T. So you see the number per hours, number of hours per day, zero, two, four, etc. So for a student who spends, spends approximately two hours per day on the phone, they earn approximately an 88 on their test score. What is an equation that most closely represents a line of best fit for the data? So we want an equation. Just like the previous problem, we'll try to use y equals mx plus b. Now for a table of values, we can't just draw a line through the data unless we graph it, which we could do. So we're going to use the calculator to make this line of best fit. Here are the instructions. We will start by going to enter the data. To enter data, we'll press stat and then number one, edit. Stat and then choice number one, edit. Now we'll enter the data in our list. The first one goes in the first list, zero, Enter, two, enter, four, six, eight, and 10. Now we'll press to the right and we'll enter the second list in. 98, 88, 75, 65, 57, and 40. Now to get the line of best fit, we press STAT again, go over to CALC, right arrow over to the CALC menu, and choose Selection 4, Linear Regression AX plus B. This is like MX plus B, like in Y equals MX plus B. And we may press Enter 
a couple more times depending on the calculator we're using. So notice it says y equals ax plus b. That's like y equals mx plus b. And the a, they give you a value, and the b, they give you a value. We may have to round sometimes. So let's record what these m and b are. I see we have negative 5.6, the 1 keeps it a 6, and b is 98.6. The 7 makes that 5 go up to a 6. So m is negative 5.6, b is 98.6. negative 5.6, and I should say squiggly equals for approximately, b is approximately 98.6. So when we write our equation, y equals negative 5.6x plus 98.6. There is an equation that most closely represents a line of best fit for the data. Most closely because we had to round. It was approximately equal to these values. Now let's use this equation. Part B. If this trend continued, what could be the test score for a student who spends 14 hours per day on their phone? Now something I just realized, we're not actually using y, y and x. The x is represented by the hours and the y is represented by the test scores. So a better equation to write for our answer is the test score equals negative 5.6 times the hours plus 98.6. This should be the equation that we use because it's using the variables that are given, the h and the t. One way to know which is which, the x is usually listed before the y. So the x would be the h, and the y would be the t. So let's use this equation. t equals negative 5.6h plus 98.6. So if they're saying spends 14 hours per day, the h is 14. The test score is what I'm looking for. So instead of h, I'm going to plug in... 14. And again, I can go to my calculator to evaluate this. So in my calculator, I can type negative 5.6 times 14 plus 98.6. Enter. 20.2. If I spend 14 hours per day, my test score is going to be approximately or is going to be equal to 20.2. That's not a very good test score. Part C. If the data were spread more equally, like in the following table, what could be the test score for a student who spends 14 hours per day on their phone. So notice it's a similar table where we're still counting 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 for the hours, but now the test scores are spread more equally. 98 subtract 11 gives me 87. Every time I spend another two hours on my phone, I subtract 11. 76 minus 11 makes 65. 54 minus 11 makes 65 minus 11 is 54, and so on and so forth. So because I see this equally spread pattern, I can find 14 hours per day after 6, 8, 12, 10 comes 12, and then 14. So subtract 11 again. 43 minus 11 is 32, and then 32 minus 11 is 21. So in this case, if I were to spend 14 hours per day on the phone, my test score would equal 21. That's just using a pattern. Take a couple minutes to describe how using a line of best fit can be useful when interpreting data. See you in class.